Welcome to Powerlifting America National Championships Day 3. I'm your host, Six Pack Lapidat. You might know me as King of the Lifts. Today we have the 76 kilo, 84 kilo, and 84 plus kilo women's division. In the 76s, we have rising upstart Dana McNeil looking to make a statement. In the 84s, the queen is back. Amanda Lawrence returns, looking to get back to the IPF World Championships and reclaim her Best Lifter Award. In the 84 pluses, Bonica Brown returns, the multiple time world champion in and out of equipment and world games champion. Don't go anywhere. The action's about to start. Taking a look at the standings here, Arian, anything pop out to you when it comes to the squat openers you see in this flight? Well, of course, the top three lifters that we're looking at for this session, they're all going to be the final squatters, so we'll get to see them all back-to-back, -back, the 76, 84, and 84-plus kilo uh, favorites going in. Um, the other thing was that Bonique initially had a 227.5 kilogram opener squat, and she switched to 245. They have, have up to three minutes before the start to switch it, so she must be feeling good in the warm-up room and said, let's go up, let's push a little bit today. Let's see if they give it a push. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is my... KOTL co-host, Arian Messi Kamesi, uh, beside me, obviously coach in programming, coach in handling, um, elite level in both. Glad you're in the booth, my friend. Yeah, thanks for having me. Of course, yeah, I was handling, you know, the past two sessions. I'm handling the next session, but this session I'm free, so hop on and do a little bit of live stream commentary with Six Pack Lapidat. Yeah, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a little more professional than our usual podcasting, <laughs> what people are used to when they hear us. And Jackie Merzer is going to open up with 115 on the bar, 84 kilo class. That's 253 pounds. And, of course, what are the chances Jackie is coached by our buddy Bill McCarthy, Get the Lift. She's starting us off here on session number three. Three white lights. Starting us off on a good note right there. Great depth, three white lights. Way to get us started. We're not expecting, look, I say it every time, but you don't want to see any drama in openers. You're hoping everybody gets on the board, but sometimes somebody misses that opener, and all of a sudden, here we go, back to the wall. You don't have one on the board yet, and the anxiety levels go up just a little. And anxieties are always high for the opener anyways. Yeah, a lot, a lot of these lifters, when they come off after their first squat, they're like, you see it in their face. They're like, relax now. They got the first one in. Yeah. So you want to make sure it's easy. You want to see a sea of green right there and build up from there going to second and third attempts. J.C. Cooper, we're in the 84-plus kilo category, 127.5 kilo on the bar for her. That's 281 pounds. Go smooth opener right there. Yeah, looks easy. Eliza Tesler, opening with 142.5 kilo. Eliza in the 76 kilo class. Yeah, she'll be battling it out a little bit there in the 76 kilo class. You know, you can see the forecasted placing right there. She's forecast for second place. She actually competed in uh, one of my competitions before, so I know her, so it's good seeing familiar faces here at the national championship. You got some direct ca uh, scouting for us. What's the scouting report? Where do you think she might be able to end up on a good day? Well, coming in, it looks like her PR is at 157.5 kilograms, opening up nicely at 142.5 kilograms, so we'll see what kind of jump she can make, see if she can get a PR squat today. Makes easy work of it. Let's see what the judges say. I'm not going to look a little bit close on depth to me. Let's see. There you go. You know what? I was going to say, like, the the weight is not an issue. She's got to drop it a little deeper. That should be no problem considering how she handled it. But they're not going to give these these lifts away. you got to earn them. Cutting Wait. it just a stitch close. Yeah, you have national referees up there, you know, some IPF Category 2 referees, Category 1 referees, and the jury and stuff. So you have to do it to the standard, they're not going to give you anything, which is good because it prepares them for those international competitions that they're going to go to later this year. Yeah, they have a, these are the same level of refs, some of them, that you'll see at an IPF Worlds event. 
So you definitely get a preparation. Alexandra Washington, we're in the 84 plus kilo class, 145 kilo on the bar for her, 319 pounds. Yeah, I was pulling up real quickly. She's 19 years old, so she's actually a junior competitor coming here to get some experience. But I was talking to her father, and she was sa they were saying how they're probably going to go to Orlando in June for the Junior Nationals as well. Wow, nicely done. Yeah, I, if you're coming for experience, there's no more of an experience than lifting alongside multiple-time world champion in and out of equipment, world games champion, Bonica Brown, a legend in the game. We had said on the podcast, possibly the biggest, most thorough resume you're going to find in this lineup. And this is a lineup of lions. <laughs> These are so many world champions lifting at the PA Nats. It says a lot. It definitely stacked, yeah, across all the weight classes, across all the days. How many world champions, world record holders, and in the case of Bonica, world games champion as well. Jasmine Doobie, 84 kilo class, 150 kilo on the bar for her, 330 pounds. Looks like her PR squat's at 160 kilos, so, you know, get this first one on the board and go from there. Look at it, aside from Eliza on the depth, no one's really loaded the bar where you're worried they're not going to be able to hit it. They missed, not going to be able to hit it. Yep. Three white lights here. In terms of weight loaded on the bar, all of it looks like they picked right. Sometimes you see somebody come out and you're like, oh my God, you could do a lot of things technically to, to correct. You're not going to get stronger in five minutes when you come back for the second attempt. So if it looks like strength is the issue, you got problems. And it happens. I don't know how it happens, but sometimes you see it. Sammy to pass from Jamaica, 172.5 kilo on the bar for her, 380 pounds. <laughs> they got their, their flags out there behind her. They're all happy to be here, hanging out with all the U.S. athletes, getting, getting a little bit of experience here and representing Jamaica well. Slamming Sammy to pass. Look at the Jamaican team we had mentioned in the previous days, here to gain some experience, lifting alongside world-class lifters with the highest level of refing um, to get the experience, what the handling is like back there and how meets are going to be run. So when they go back to Jamaica, it just keeps expanding. <laughs> Nicely done. Yeah, for example, with Sammy, I was I was coaching in the back yesterday, and she was there in the back. She'd come during the breaks and come talk to lifters, like, hey, how'd the weight cut go? Hey, what do you think about this, like that? So she's going back there and taking notes from these athletes to gain experience, and then now she gets to come out here and execute. This is it. You, the best way to learn is experience. You could read about it. You could watch a video about it. But living through it, it it's a whole nother deal. Dana McNeil, I didn't mean that to rhyme, by the way. 175, 385 pounds on the bar. Dana, there's a lot of hype around her. A rising star. She could definitely do some damage at Worlds, but she's flown, actually, from Japan to get here. Her flight, I was asking her from Japan to South Africa at Worlds, likely to be around an hour. So she have a massive advantage over the reigning world champion uh, in the 76 kilo class, Jessica Bittner, in the world. However, on the flip side, here, we're gonna have to see how she feels because that is one hell of a, of a trip. Yep, so you know they can, they can play it more conservative, especially on this opening squat, get it in, and then see how she's feeling, how she's acclimating to the time zone change and the travel. The other thing we were discussing on the podcast is like what her body weight would be because the IPF has changed her weight classes. And you can see she weighed in 73 and changed. So she's easily in this weight class, which is going to help with the travel. You don't have to worry about the weight cut, and she can maybe eat a little bit in going into South Africa as well, build up that squat and bench press a little bit more because, yeah, she's going to have a battle. Oh, nice. Nicely done. Three white lights. Yeah, smooth opener for her and how she's built. She may not be super explosive out of the hole, but it was one consistent speed. Looked good for her. Now, are you familiar with this young lady? IPF World Championships best lifter, Amanda Lawrence, the reigning queen in the IPF, returns 
opening with 227.5 kilo. Bar is ready for Amanda. Yeah, of course, so as we did. As we discussed this before, you know, she was the 2019 world champion and best lifter. Of course, 2020, we didn't have the world championships. She comes back 2021, world champion, best lifter at Worlds again. And then this is setting up the three-peat. Three world titles, three best lifters, three in a row. This is step one in that process. Looking to make history is Amanda Lawrence. This is the first step. Yeah. Easy work. No problem. And this is like a who's who of powerlifting today. Uh, back to back, all time greats. Bonica Brown now, 245 kilo for her opening squat. Bonica missed out on the 2021 World Championships. Would love to get back, reclaim that title. Let everybody know I am the queen of the IPF. All roads lead to me. If you want the number one spot, you gotta get through me to do it. Yeah, I mean, our sheet of notes is just Bonica accomplishments from top to bottom. You know, she had her first run as a sub junior. She was competing in the Open Championships as a sub junior, and now this is her second run after a few years off. And since about 2014, she's been unstoppable. Any meet she enters in, she gets first place. Unfortunately, she didn't have the chance last year, but she's coming back to take that title this year. Yeah, look, I'd read you off her resume, but it's 60 seconds for a lift, and I don't have the time. Oh, blew it up. Blew up 245. Like I said, she must have been feeling good. She bumped up that opener from 227.5 to 245, and there you go, easy 245 opener. We got everyone with a good lift, minus uh, Eliza with the just cutting the depth a little bit on that first one. And if you're wondering, Eliza put in the same weight for her opener. You would suggest maybe that's a, a good call nine times out of 10? Yeah, definitely 99% of the time you're gonna take the same one, especially for her, it's gonna be her first national championship. And it's just the, the stress, as we said. You know, first national championship, she's just like, get third lifter up. Maybe she was a little bit scared to go out there and she kind of cut it a little bit. So you don't want to put more stress by adding more weight on the bar. Right. Jackie Merzer, 122.5 being loaded for her. Second attempts now. This is a relatively quick turnaround. And, and that can impact the lifters when you're selecting the weight. It, it definitely can impact the lifters. Like the first day, you know, for my lifter, Jonathan Garcia, we had 11 lifters. And so it's, it's tough making the weights that you want to hit, the goals you want to hit with that many lifters, but it prepares them for the international meets. Right. So maybe they don't want this, but it's good for them. <laughs> Part of life. You don't always want it, but you need it. Let's see how Jackie handles her second attempt. <laughs> Three white lights and it's good. Yeah, a little bit of a struggle for her uh, on that second one, but they went up seven and a half, so we'll see. Maybe they'll just go up two and a half on that third attempt um, and try and come away with three squats. And how did that go for you and your lifter, by the way, Jonathan Garcia? You know, national champion, first time ever, so can't complain, you know. It doesn't matter about what exactly the numbers were. Maybe, you know, we didn't hit any personal records. It wasn't maybe the numbers we want, but you're here for the national title. Whatever way you can get it, for both Kristen Dunsmore helped out yesterday and for Jonathan Garcia, day one, the title is what you need. And then from there, you can worry about records later on other meets. That's right. Get yourself to the world championships. J.C. Cooper. We're back in the 84 pluses with 137.5 kilo loaded on the bar for her. 303 pounds. There it is. Three white lights. Yep, smooth second attempt right there for her. She should have another solid jump in her. All, all these lifters are taking about seven and a half to 10 kilo jump from first to second, um, which kind of falls in line for where their maxes are. You don't want to take too big of a jump, and you know the weight feels heavy in your back, and maybe it's a fast turnaround. Um, but you want to take a little sizable jump to get you ready for the third attempt. So we're going to start seeing that. Some solid second attempts here. 
Eliza Tesla getting the crowd behind her, retaking 142.5. I'm not expecting any major struggles. It was a depth issue, but by no means a strength issue. Uh, so, and and that might help her out a little bit, getting her crowd behind her. You 100%. know, get a little bit excited and stuff like that. Get rid of that stress and focus on executing. The greatest pre-workout you could take is adrenaline. Well, it's going to be close again, though. It was a little bit deeper, but it was close again. Let's see what the referees say. Good enough, but let's take a look at this from this angle. Yeah, that's rape. That's economical, as I like to say. Do not cut it any closer than that. Oftentimes, you want to see where's the strike zone today. The judges let you know this is a strike zone. Stay within it, and you're okay. Now she knows. Fair play. Do not cut any more than that. Yep, usually you want to see that little bit of a dip at the end that you know they that bounced it below parallel. She didn't quite have that. She was right there. So two to one, but that's all you need. You're in the meet. You move on from there. Alexandra Washington, 84, and a, 84 plus kilo class, 152.5 loaded on the bar for her. It's 336 pounds. Representing Jamaica. No. Nope, sorry, this is a U.S. lifter. And her PR is at 155.5. So this is just under her PR. We'll set up for, for that PR on the third attempt. <laughs> Nicely done. What do you think, Arian? That was a seven and a half kilo jump. What do you anticipate for her third? There's a little bit of struggle through the middle, but you saw like she powered up Sendo's second gear into that lockout. So I think they're going to try that 157.5 because, like I said, this is kind of like a test for her, getting that experience. So they want to maybe try that PR here on the big stage and, you know, get that experience. Look, if you're going to hit a PR, this is the stage to do it. Yeah, and then, you know, in June she goes back to junior uh, nationals, and then she has that experience going there that she's done the meet with these top-level referees um, here on the big stage. Jasmine Doobie, 84 kilo class, 162 and a half on the bar for her. It's a 12 and a half kilo jump from her opener. Now it's not, I know when you hear these kilo jumps, sometimes people like to open relatively light. So it's not as big as you think. Anticipate a much smaller jump from the second to the thirds. Yeah, she took a sizable jump, 12 and a half kilos, and here it looks like her PR is 160. So she's actually going for a PR in her second attempt. So training must have been going well. She's feeling confident. Let's see what she can do. Oh, wow. That was a bit of a fight, though, wasn't it? That was a bit of a fight through that middle, but she stuck with it. She locked it out. Now she's in that position. Got to be two and a half kilo from there, no? Got to be two and a half kilos or a pass and just save it because it's going to be a quick meet. So you need that energy for bench. You need that energy for deadlift. Oftentimes, if a lifter misses their third squat and grinding it out, they're going to miss their third deadlift as well. Do you ever have a lifter not come up for a third because you don't want them to empty the tank for two and a half more kilo? That's greatly going to affect them far more than two and a half kilo on bench, far more than two and a half kilo on deadlift. Definitely, definitely, because you're trying to gain two and a half kilos on squat, but if you miss, you may injure yourself or you may uh, waste all your energy and then miss out on five kilos on deadlift, so it's not worth the trade-off. Dana McNeil, 76 kilo class, 182.5. That's 402 pounds. Yeah, and for her, PR is listed as 195, but as I mentioned earlier, she's gone through the different weight classes, and so this may have been her PR from another weight class. And again, like we said, the travel and everything like that, play conservative. You don't have to go for PR here. Just secure the title. Travel like that will test your heart. Dana McNeil's got a heart of a lion. Let's see how she handles this. There Nicely you go. done. You know, Dana McNeil has previously hit 550 kilo for her total. And if you're looking at Jessica Bittner, a 565, Dana is within striking distance. Already said, Jessica's got a huge travel to South Africa. Dana, one hour distance in a plane ride. I mean, you could do an hour within the same country. The matchup down the road is gonna be tight. 
And, and don't forget, we got. That's what she told me. My producer Pete is saying, no, it'll be more than it's an hour. It's more than an Japan, hour, but Africa. this is what she told me. But and, and don't forget, Kimberly Wofford said, "Hey, I'm moving up a weight class. She's up right. there at 547.5 kilos. So we're gonna have a war there in the 76 kilo class. Even if it's more than an hour, you get my point. <laughs> oh, my P Pete Spence, my man, is hooking me up with the uh, distance here. And we got Sammy DePass here from Jamaica taking 182.5 kilos, 402 pounds for the second attempt. And this is the guest lifter they're talking about. 402. It looks like that was a PR for her right there, Ryan. It says 181.5 is her PR. She just took 182.5. Now Pete Spencer showed me the distance is gonna be great. Someone better tell Dana. <laughs> Because she was expressing to me in the warm up room, it's going to be very favorable. Wow. Amanda Lawrence. 237.5. Now, we had a discussion on the podcast. Is she going to go top end? Is she pacing right now for 237.5 as well within means? If she ends off around 250. We're getting close to the top end. I, I think they're going to save it is what I thought going in. And looking at now, I think they're going to save it as well. Her PR is 256. I think right now she's setting up for more of like a 245 third attempt. Like, you know, leave some in the tank. You got the eight-week turnaround. You don't need to have, you know, a monster total here. Um, and, you know, she's going to be in the driver's seat for Worlds. So the last thing you want to do is injure yourself here. Absolutely. That's pretty textbook for Amanda Lawrence. Cut that one a little bit higher, but we'll see what the referees say. Three white lights. Yeah, you know what? I think um, you're right. A seven and a half kilo jump. Go three for three. You get a little weight on your back. It's a nice little RPE eight or nine day. Yeah, I'm sure that's what that's what Joey's thinking, as we saw with some of his other lifters previously. He didn't go all out for them, especially on the squat and deadlift. The bench, you can recover a little bit quicker. So I think he'll, you know, 245 seems a safe third attempt. You know, leave some in the tank. Except for Jonathan Keiko. He definitely went all out. <laughs> when, you're in a, when you're in a battle, you have to, you have to take oh, everything you got. I am still on a high from that battle. And the 69s. Bonica Brown, 255 on the bar for her second attempt. 10 kilo jump. Yeah, and of course, I think we're going to see a similar thing with Bonica. She's done 276 before, but here she's taking 255, and maybe she goes 260, 262 on the, on the third. Uh, she has a busy year coming up where she has the Classic Worlds in June, the World Games in July, and I believe she's going to be looking into the Open Worlds in November as well. Oh, wow. Look at that. Makes easy work of 255 kilo. <laughs> and, and, and you look. <laughs> giving a fist bump <laughs> to the spotters. Keeping the positive energy going. And you look at that, and that looked like an opener. Yeah. So, you know, she's saving energy, but she's also getting information for Worlds. Like, okay, that move like an opener, maybe that's what her opener will be at Worlds. And she just shifts all her attempts up and pushes a little bit more at Worlds. It's true, this is a good test. It's all fine and dandy in the gym. It's another deal when it's on the platform with international judges there. We're going to the third attempts now, Ryan. This is where we're going to see some of these lifters. The ones who are pushing it, we're going to be seeing them grinding it out, pushing it for those personal records or just for podium placing, start building that total. We might see some fireworks. Jackie Merzer in the 84 kilo class. 127.5 on the bar for her. Five kilo jump. Yeah, like I said, that second one was a little bit difficult, but some lifters can go really slow and grind out. Some lifters are all or nothing. Like they get that bounce and come up or they don't. So she could be a, a very slow squatter and she'll come grind this out. See if she can go three for three on the squats. Oh, 
Whoa, a little too much today. Got herself out of the hole, but the brakes came on about an inch above the hole there. And spotters and loaders quick to get it for us. Yeah, just a little too much for her. She got, yeah, like I said, she got that little spring on the bottom, and then you got to get your hips to power through, through that little sticking point. She just didn't have it there today. Eliza Tesler, we're in the 76 kilo class. Missed her opener, but it was on depth, not on strength. Came back in the second, hit it, knows where the strike zone is now. Goes up seven and a half kilo at 150. I'm thinking this was what they planned for her second attempt. So I'm expecting her to have relative ease with it. Yeah, I agree. Talking to the crowd now. Look at her. Yeah, she's getting the, the crowd. crowd. Looks like she has a nice group of fans out there cheering her on. I like it when the lifters interact with the crowd. That's, I think she went deeper. I think that was her best <laughs> one, Ryan. She just needs to go heavier, that's all. <laughs> Three whites this time. That's great that she was able to turn around from that first attempt, start building some momentum. Now we might see some more out of her during the bench and Della. She's getting with the crowd, getting excited and everything like that, um, getting rid of some of that stress. So hopefully she'll have a good momentum going now into the bench press. 150 in the bar for J.C. Cooper in the 84-plus kilo class now. And, and J.C. may be starting to feel better as well because you see the 10-kilo jump from the first to second and now 12-and-a-half-kilo jump from second and third. So maybe those lifters are waking up a little bit, figuring out, like you said, that strike zone, getting comfortable on the platform and saying, okay, now let's push it a little bit for the third. That looks good. Smooth lift. And, and there you go. Three for three in the squad event. And even with that 12 and a half kilo jump, Ryan, it looked like she had some more in her. Yeah. Definitely two and a half, maybe even five more in her. Yeah, but like you said, I mean, the percentages of if you miss your third squat, the likelihood of missing your third deadlift is like 67%. So sometimes you're building the total, stay within your limit. Yeah. Alexandra Washington, 155 on the bar for her. Staying in the 84 kilo class, 84 plus kilo class. That is 341 pounds. Yeah, and for Alexandra, I'd, I'd mentioned, you know, her PR was 155.5. The second one was a, a bit difficult, so they play it smart. Just take the two and a half kilo jump. See if she can basically, basically the same as her PR. You know, 0.5 kilos between you and me, Ryan, not a big deal. <laughs> Sometimes a little bit of, a, li a little bit more meaning to the lift. You know, you're gonna handle it a little more different. Yeah, you Inspiration know. Inspiration means a lot. Yeah, here she's competing with the open lifter, so she also doesn't have the option to chip a junior record. She can only chip the open record, so you gotta take the, the two and a half kilo jump and take the 155. Three white lights. There you go, and, and that look, you know, about the same speed, maybe a little better in her second. So, you know, a lot of these athletes seems like they're starting to come into it now in the second and third attempt squats. Jasmine Doobie now, 165 kilo on the bar for her. 363 pounds, also opting for a two and a half kilo jump from her second. Yeah, as we mentioned for her, she hit the PR on the second attempt, um, but because of the 12 and a half kilo jump, it was uh, quite difficult. So now she's just, you know, add another two and a half kilos on there, try and get another PR. too much. Yep, this is a little too heavy for her. You see coming out of the hole, she got pulled out of position. The chest sagged a little bit and um, hip shot up. Could not recover. But you know, came away with the PR on, on the second attempt, got two squats in, she move on to the bench press. Dana McNeil, 190 kilo being loaded on the bar for her. Yeah, for her PR was 195. 
kilos, like we said. Here she's just playing the conservative, figuring out how it feels with the travel and everything like that, and getting that title. Legendary coach Mike T in her corner today. He's going to be an asset when they face off with Jessica Bittner at Worlds. Should he be going? Yeah, I think we're, we're, we're all starting to figure out whether we're going to go or not. Step one is like get your lifter to win the national title, and then step two, figure out you know the, the timing of it and expenses and everything like that and see if you can get out there. And of course, the requirements that we have to do as far as uh, completing all the stuff. All the paperwork. Three for three in the squad event. And Sammy DePass, 190 on the bar for her. 418 pounds. Love Sam. Jess Lifter from Jamaica. Yeah, she's a guest lifter from Jamaica, so she's not competing here for the national title, but just great seeing her. She's doing the, the same squat as Dana. So, you know, they got some strong lifters out there in Jamaica, and we're seeing some of that here on the platform these past three days. I tell you what, in the past few weeks, we've seen so many women emerge in the 76 kilo class in the classic division. Oh, Sammy sticks with it. Doesn't let the form break down, able to fight through it. As I was saying, so many women, you know, Agata in Poland, obviously, a star in the equipped, but transitioned over into the Raw division and put the world on notice. Um, from New Zealand, yeah. Lani. Ka Carlina. Carlina, she goes by Lina, sorry. And uh, yeah, the 76 kilo class worldwide, globally, has become very competitive. Yeah, then of course you have the regular North Americans and Europeans, and so, you know, you may have four or five athletes, you know, this year, maybe in the future, battling it out for a podium slot in that 76, because there's just gonna be so much depth. Amanda Lawrence, 242.5. Looking to go three for three. Yeah, and I figure she would do somewhere around 245. Looks like Joey's playing even safer. Just take 242.5. Um, save that energy, man. Just make three squats. Continue to build that momentum going into Worlds. Yeah, I would definitely say this is the proper decision to make. And this is well within Amanda's reason. She's, she's done 250, you know, so many times in the gym before. Three white lights. That is textbook Amanda Lawrence. And, and pretty fast for her. She can really grind out on squats. So while that may have looked like a little bit of struggle for us looking at it, for her, she's probably like, oh, that's easy. I could have done another rep with it. Yeah. Though you have to compare the lifter's own lifts, not them to other lifters. Sometimes what looks like a grinder is not a grinder for them. They have gears left to tap into. Bonica Brown, 260. I guess Again, this one, right? <laughs> yeah. 573 pounds. And she's having a blast out there. She is. She's glad to be back, you know, missing out on last year. Look it's disappointing. You, can't, you don't get to defend your title. Now she has her chance again, and she's having a blast, and the crowd's going wild right now. Look at the smile on Bonica's face as she approaches the bar. She's home. She's home again. Yep. Even wow. that one looked like a warm up, Ryan. Wow. A lot left in the tank for Bonica Brown. Any of the 84 pluses of the world got to be watching. She's coming back for her title in South Africa in June. 
all, all the titles. All South the Africa titles in June, yeah. World <laughs> Games in July, Open Worlds in November. Ponika is going to be greedy for 2022. The queen is back. And there is a look at your squat standings at the end of this flight. Arian, any surprises here? This is pretty much what we'd expect. Pretty much what we expected and, and really good on the athletes. Other than, you know, if we take out Eliza missing the opener, only two athletes missed their third attempts. Everyone else came and executed. So uh, really good as far as people performing to the standards, taking the attempts they can get. And as far as the top three lifters, Dana, Amanda, and Bonica, kind of hit the numbers we were expecting. That's right. And Eliza seemed to be getting stronger and stronger. It hit her third like it was an opener. So we'll see what to expect. We'll We'll see a little bit of an indication what to expect in the bench press and the deadlift. Don't go anywhere. We are going to take a 20-minute break. We'll see you soon. Hi, my name is Amanda Lawrence. I am the reigning IPF world champion. Um, I've won the 84 kilo class for the last two worlds in a row, so two times, um, as well as best overall female lifter the last two years. So um, that's been a big goal of mine. And this year we're looking to make history and go for that third time best lifter. So my kind of mentality just like just it, it, does, it doesn't matter the sport that I've been in like throughout my life it's always like what's next I want to be the best at it that I can be um, obviously when I started out powerlifting it was kind of more like this is fun it's kind of like a hobby but then once you you know you start going to you know you start at local meets and then national meets it's always like what's next after that and I always um, strive to be the best it's always it's always been me versus me versus me, you, you versus you, but um, there's just something special about being able to say that you're the best in the world um, and, and, and nothing can compare to that. My first Worlds was back in 2019. The goal was just to secure winning my weight class, um, the 84 kilo division, and with that, I just so happened to have one best lifter, and I'm just the type of, that year, and I'm just the type of person that once I've earned something, I mean, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to go back from that. So um, at this point, um, my main goal, like going into Worlds, obviously, like I said, winning the 84 kilo division first priority, um, but more so, what's going to challenge me is going for that overall best lifter for a third time in a row, the, the three-peat. Um, that's never been done in history of powerlifting. And, you know, that's, that's, what, I'm, that's what I'm here to try, doing, trying to do in this sport is, um, you know, push the limits, break boundaries, do what's never been done. So um, that's what keeps me going, right? Um, so yeah, that's my biggest goal going into this world, get that three times. So for PA Nats here, we're going in, we're going in focused, we're going in prepared, um, and with a plan to, in order to secure the spot for Worlds um, and ultimately get to Sheffield. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to do whatever it takes, no matter the circumstance, and get the job done. Um, and obviously, you know, keep pushing the limits and um, breaking records <laughs> and, uh, you know, just having fun while doing it. So um, super, super excited to, to be here for PA Nats and um, grateful, uh, very grateful.
And we're back. Kicking things off in the bench presses. Obviously, we're going to start with our openers. And Jackie Merzer will be kicking us off with a 65 kilo, 143 pound opening bench. What do you expect to see from these ladies here today, Ari? Again, similar to the, the squat, we're going to want to see those easy openers, maybe even more so on the bench press because there's more commands. You don't know how long the pauses are going to be on the chest. And so there's a little bit more variables when it comes to bench press, you know, the platform and, and how you step your feet and the, the bench and everything like that. So you want to go extra conservative, make sure you don't screw things up when it comes to bench press after you had a great performance on the squat. Yeah, I've I had a couple conversations with some of the lifters and you know some are saying look at sometimes the pauses feel a lot longer and this is an international level of judging and that goes with the standards of the lifts it could be a learning experience if you're not used to it three white lights for jackie though yeah and of course with jackie she decided to go no lift off but some people do want the lift off so then you have to explain the lift off and make sure you get a quality lift off because that can throw you off as well so another variable in there as well now, why would you think a, a lifter might go for the no lift off? Just one, they could be comfortable with it in the gym. Like personally, when I train, I do no lift off because I don't have a training partner, so I don't want to switch that up on meet day. And two, to take that variable out. You don't want to be like, oh, well, the lift off pulled me up too much, brought me out too much. Well, do it yourself if you're capable of it. Jasmine Duby, 80 kilo on the bar for her, 176 pounds. Yeah, Jasmine hit that PR on the squat, so we'll see if she can also go for a PR today on the bench press at 90 kilos is what we have listed, so 80 kilos is a nice start to get her to that point. Looks smooth, and maybe this is a good time. We got ourselves a ref in co-commentary. What are some of the infractions a lifter might do to miss their lift? One of the biggest ones across all three lifts, and especially the bench press, is the commands because they can't see the referee. They have to make sure they listen to the referee for that start command, that press command, and the rack command. And then the other things are usually the butt and the feet. So you have to keep the butt on the bench the entire time and feet flat on the ground the entire time. Sometimes when the lift gets difficult, some people want to like compromise and lift their butt up a little bit or maybe their heels come up if they're not focusing on that. Alexandra Washington. 82.5 kilo on the bar for her, 181 pounds. We are in the 84 pluses. For this flight, we're going to be bouncing around from the 76s, 84s, and 84 pluses. Yeah, and while this is an open championship, we have the mix of ages. We have Alexander here, who's 19 years old. Day one, we had Eric Kupperstein, who is a Masters 2, I believe. So we have a mix of athletes here in the open championships. Three by lights. Lisa Tesler, 76 kilo class. I spoke to her in the warm up room after squats. And she told me, you know what? I think I was just a little bit nervous on that first squat that I missed. But as the confidence grew, and you see her confidence was growing from, from lift to lift, the weight got heavier, and she just blew up her third attempt. Yeah, she looked confident coming out for this first one. Um, bench press, she's running out there to go get set up and take this opening attempt. Showing no fear now, 85 kilo. And it looks like she's got some deadlift arms based off that range of motion, my friend. <laughs> so the, the best is yet to come for her, but yeah. she got the opener in, so much better start here on the bench press compared to the squat. Slamming Sammy to pass. 87 and a half kilo on the bar for her, 192 pounds. And she was three for three in the, in the squats and hit a PR on the squats. And her PR on the bench press is 90.5, opening up just under that 87.5. So that training cycle must have been going very well for her. And she's ready here to come and show up what she can do representing Jamaica. If all goes well, I think they're going to load it up. Let's see how the opener moves. Hey. 
Okay, wow. I would, judging by that, I think a PR attempt is definitely within reason today. I have to agree with you. Three white lights. Next lifter, Raymond McNeil, will be opening up at 198 pounds. And our Michael world Michael traveler, Dana McNeil, in the 76 kilo class, opening with 90 kilo, 198 pounds. Yeah, and you were talking about Della Farms. You're going to have another one here. Yeah. You know, Dana has got her PR at 105. She's opened up here with easy 90 kilos. But you'll see that range of motion. You'll see she's got that deadlift, which we'll see later on. Monster deadlift. Dana has a monster deadlift on her, 100%. You know, there's very few lifters in the world that are going to be heading to the IPF World Championships that will rival the current world champion, Jessica Bittner, in the deadlift. Dana's among them. Yep, and that makes it interesting for Worlds is not only lifters like Jess, Kimberly, and Dana have the totals that are competitive, but they all have the big deadlifts too. So it's going to be a crazy bout at the end of who pulls what and who pulls the biggest and goes for, you know, that world title. Look at the range of motion on this bench press. <laughs> Whoa. Long way up, long way down. Three way lights. Yeah, and, and oftentimes the bench press can be more affected by the travel and the body weight, all those things, a little bit more sensitive. So she'll get a good experience on that too, seeing, you know, how, how she's strong she feels in this body weight. Should she go up maybe going into worlds and things like that. JC Cooper, we're in the 84 pluses, 92.5 kilo on the bar for her. That is 203 pounds. Yep, PR is listed here at 100 kilos, so very safe, conservative 92.5 kilo opener right here. Let's see what she can do. Makes easy work. Three white lights. Reigning IPF world champion and best lifter, Amanda Lawrence, will open up with 120 kilo. Yeah, not only is she the world champion, but she has the IPF world record on the squat deadlift in total. Benches hasn't been her lift before, but she's slowly chipping away at it, progressing a little bit more and more, getting closer and closer to that world record. You know, maybe one day she'll have all the world records in that weight class. Yeah, when we say bench hasn't been her thing, we're talking in all of history. <laughs> if we talk about Mana Lawrence, that is the standard. She's the greatest 84 we've ever seen. And, uh, you know, arguably the most dominant IPF lifter in the women's division, winning the best lifter, but... We'll have to see what 2022 brings. Going over the liftoff, you had mentioned earlier uh, that can be key. A misgroove on bench, much more difficult to bounce back from than a misgroove on the squat or the deadlift. Not like you ever want a misgroove, but if I can have a pick, please don't let it be the bench press. Yes, and that's why it's important to explain to them how exactly you want the liftoff. Oh, wow. Well, well, I don't think I've ever seen a man to do 120 like that. That was literally an empty bar for her. Bench training has been going good. I take it. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. Bonica, she is, <laughs> she is vibing out right now. Definitely in a positive mind state. I talked to her in the back as well in between sessions, and she said, yeah, she's on point today. Uh, she's feeling confident. I don't know if she needs to go all out, but... Certainly, she can make it easier on herself by making these a lower RPE, saving it for Worlds. Yeah, Amelia Mergier from France is going to be a problem in the in, the, in terms of a showdown at the World Championships. Yeah, she doesn't need to go all out on the bench, but you know she's held the world record in the bench press before, so this will give her a good indication as well how strong is she eight weeks out, and can she go and get that world record again, if, especially if she's going to be in a battle at Worlds. And she will be. Expect, and, and if you're talking about the bench press record. Hey! Nicely done. <laughs> that, that was just as fast as Amanda's opening. Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> she knows. Yeah, in terms of the 84 pluses, internationally speaking, another one of those weight classes that is really catching up. 
where Bonica might have come previous years and been like, all right, I, I don't have to go all out. That will likely not be the case at this World Championships. Anticipating some showdowns, anticipating some battles. Yeah, and of course these athletes like that too. They like a little bit of motivation, like they have a competitor. And also they can go back and say, listen, I won the world title against these other great lifters. You know, they tried to come for my title and I still beat them. So it helps the resume. Jackie Merzer, 70 kilo on the bar for her, five kilo jump from her opener. Th this looks like to be her PR right here, so she can tie her PR here on the second and then shoot for that new PR on the third attempt. See how she handles it. Ooh, slow and steady. Three white lights, but I tell you what, she does not want to go any more than two and a half kilo above this. Yep, you know, that was basically our RPE 10, so at that point, yeah, you give, you know, two and a half kilos more a shot, or maybe even pass on it, save your energy for deadlifts, since this is a quick, quick meet with the 20 minute breaks. She did weigh in a little bit light as well at 82.23, so that usually has a bigger effect on bench press, it's very sensitive to body weight, so that could be part of what's going on as well. Jasmine Doobie in the 84 kilo class, 87 and a half kilo being loaded for her. Her PR is at 90 kilo, so this is just under. A lot of athletes like setting up this way. The second attempt is a stepping stone to that third attempt where you're trying to maximize what you can do on the day and hopefully go for some records. Not today. A little too much. Bought herself some insurance with that opener. She will be able to move forward into the deadlifts regardless. And she's obviously got one more attempt to take another stab at that. Aliza Tesler now, 76 kilo class, 90 kilo on the bar for her. Five kilo jump from her opener. Yeah, that's the importance of that opener is you want to pick something you can definitely get in to stay in the meet. So once you're out of the meet, then your day's done. But you know, at least for, for Jasmine, she got that opener. So if she misses her second and third bench, she can still move on to Delft, still get a total. Oh my goodness, it's starting to, okay. I was gonna say, that looked like it was pinned to the chest and then it started moving. You know, unfortunately, you have to get the bar motionless on the chest and the referee needs to see that bar motionless. It looked like she was hovering a little bit, bouncing around a little bit on the chest. So the referee was holding her, waiting to see that bar motionless to get the press command. And so unfortunately she wasn't able to get it, but maybe she can come back and make a little bit of technical adjustment on the third attempt and get that bar motionless, get the faster press command. Alexandra Washington in 84 pluses, 90 kilo for her second attempt. The other thing some of these athletes may have to figure out, and same with the coaches, is the speed of this event. Some people may be used to two full flights or maybe three flights. We hear some local meets that maybe go eight hours, nine hours. This is not that. No. These are two to three hour sessions with those 20 minute breaks to warm up, so they need to adjust to the speed of the meet and pick attempts that they're capable of making with that kind of speed. I was talking in the back to Bonica in between the sessions, and she said she was talking to the spotters and saying, listen, Ordinarily, you want to be quick, and I appreciate that. Take your time here, fellas. <laughs> no, no, Take your time no, here. No, no rush, gentlemen. <laughs> Short flight, gentlemen. Three white lights. And Dana McNeil coming out to 95 kilo. Our producer just gave me a note saying, actually, the travel from Japan to South Africa is one hour more than the travel from Japan to here. Is that right? He's shaking his head, yes. I would not have guessed that with the proximities, but it is what it is. The globe is round, depends which way you go. But uh, we depends never on stops passing and everything. up an opportunity to slide me a note. <laughs> Bless him. I get the same thing at the IPF Worlds. Eric Roop does not let me off the hook if I get geographic uh, errors. But the positive thing is if it is that similar, then this is the practice right here. Well, you're right. 
this is true. I don't know what adjustments you can make besides getting there a little earlier and acclimatizing to the time zone changes. Nice press, though. Three by lights. Yeah, for our national teams, we typically tell the lifters, if possible, get there at least two days early. You know, That's we, we minimum for something Minimum, like but, you know, people have jobs, people have school and everything like that, so they can't come one or two weeks early and just live there and train there and get ready. So we say, at least come two days early. One, to try and get used to the time zone change, and two, in case your flight gets delayed, canceled, you lose your bag, those kinds of things. Cortisol levels go up, it'll affect you. 95 kilo on the bar for semi to pass. Going, going for that PR right here on the second attempt. Representing Jamaica as a guest lifter. Now a lot of people definitely underestimate what travel will do to you, to you, time zone changes will do to you, let alone if it's a complete you know change in terms of foods and whatnot. Wow. Power that one up. Seven and a half kilo jump, and she handles it well. And Sammy is doing great. Her forecast of total right now is 492.5, so she could be heading 500 plus as well in this 76 kilo class. And I don't know if Jamaica is going to send anyone to Worlds, but you know that could be another person in 76 is doing 500 plus. Certainly towards the future as well. Um, you know, the World Championships. There's a bid for the U.S. to host that. Put a pin in that and keep pay attention. But uh, Jamaica's close obviously in distance and that's another year of training another year of exposure at this level the 76 kilo class is becoming more and more competitive jc cooper 97.5 now there is a 60 second timer and we're down to about 33 seconds right now she should have plenty of time to set up but just got to be mindful of your time once you hear the bar is loaded yeah, I'm going to help. She, she doesn't need a lift off, so she can just go up there, pull it out. That She's helps. got 20 seconds, plenty of time. Yep, that helps. She blows it off her chest. Three white lights. And that was two and a half kilos underneath her PR, so I'm expecting a PR on that third attempt because that second one moved very well. IPF's reigning queen, Amanda Lawrence, now. 127 and a half being loaded for her second attempt. Seven and a half kilo jump. She absolutely disrespected 120. <laughs> that 120, yeah, really fast lately in the opener, so seven and a half kilo jump. I don't expect this to be any problem for her either. Yeah, seven and a half kilo ordinarily is a, a pretty big jump on bench press. But the way she handled 120, that's entirely reasonable. <laughs> I think she'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> Slow down a little bit, but not too bad. So we'll see if they take, you know, two and a half or maybe even five. Her PR is 132 and a half, so they could take the five kilo jump and just tie her PR here. Bonica Brown, look at Bonica in her element right now. <laughs> 142.5 loaded on the bar for her. Four, 314 pounds. Bar is ready for Bonica. She smoked that opener too, so again, similar to Amanda, seven and a half kilo jump. Expect this to be no problem for Bonica here. Should not be any major issues. You want to talk about experience, Bonica's got plenty. You know, we are talking and she destroys that. We are talking about lifters making adjustments for the travel, knowing the time they need to acclimatize, and that's very individual in and of itself. Bonica's done all that in spades. Plenty of experience at the top end level. Yep. First time I actually met her was 2014 World in South Africa. So we're going back. There it is, man. You got plenty of experience yourself, young man. Yeah, well, I've been with Bonica in South Africa, Finland, Belarus, 
So she has plenty of experience with all the traveling and different types of food and everything like that. Doesn't look like the pressure is getting to Tesla. All smiles back there. And Jackie Merzer, 72.5 for her third and final bench. And, and as I mentioned, Ryan, you maybe go up two and a half kilos or maybe you time out. So it looks like what Jackie is doing here and her coach Tim is to just time out on this third, not waste your energy, not go out there and miss an attempt that you know you can't get and give you more rest going into Delft, which is her lift. And it is the sporting thing to do. Let it time out. Don't X out your last lift. This is already a quick flight, as we, as we mentioned. Allow your competitors to have that extra minute for rest period. It's appreciated. Yep, as you had mentioned earlier, like, you know, Bonique is trying to convince the, the spars to go slower. So, yeah, this is a good move as well here with 10 athletes to, you know, give that little extra minute there and not cut it down to nine people in the flight for the third attempts. I see Chloe Dublin in the back. Uh, IPF World's Junior Star. Had plenty of battles at the World Championships herself. So, Eliza is in good hands. Yes. And as you mentioned with the, the whole getting stressed out, the opener squat, it helps to have someone who not only your coach, but also they've competed at those same high level competition can tell them like, hey, this is how I felt my first squat too. Like you'll be fine, just make these adjustments and everything like that. And you'd be like, okay, you know, Chloe's competed at the World Championships. I'm, uh, she knows what she's talking about. I, I would hope so. Jasmine Doobie. 87.5, loaded on the bar once more for her. Yeah, she missed this on her second attempt, come back and give it on her, on her third attempt. In the classic st uh, style, it's a little bit difficult to come back off a of miss. There's very few adjustments you can do, but maybe there was, you know, she wasn't as tight or maybe her feet slipped, something like that, making some kind of adjustment here and come back and get this on the third. That's where you see some difference in game planning here. Um, one lady decides, look, for two and a half kilo, I'm not going to empty the tank, tighten up my back. The other lady's like, I'm going out for this. Oh, a little too much. It kind of depends on that conversation, right? We had talked about it earlier. For an extra two and a half kilo, is it worth it? It's a bigger picture situation. It depends. You might need that two and a half kilo. So it's situation by situation, athlete by athlete. Some athletes, they have so much reserves. They can empty the tank time and time again. Other athletes, I got one or two good fights in me in the day. Let's pick our battles. These are worth two and a half kilo. Mm -hmm. Aliza Tesler, 92.5, Miss 90, opting to come out with 92.5. And this could be one where a technical change could come back and make it because, you know, she was bobbling a little bit on the chest, like was barely touching and got the really long press command. If she brings it down to the chest and completely stops it, she's going to get that faster press command and come back and get this and more since she just went up two and a half kilos. And hey, listen, as the weights got heavier in squats, she got better. Nope, not today. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't let it rattle or anything. That's what you got to do. You got to have a short, short memory when it comes to a miss. There's plenty more lifting to go in the deadlifts. Alexandra Washington, 92.5. On the bar for her, 203 pounds. This is going to tie her PR, so they opted to just take the two and a half kilo jump. You know, continue to make attempts, gain her that experience, young lifter, coached by her father. So, you know, just make attempts, gain experience, go into Junior Nationals in June, and get the team spot there. Yeah, Powerlifting America is going to have an absolutely stacked open class team and stacked juniors from what we're seeing here this weekend. And those entries keep coming in in June for nationals. Oh, it's a fight. Nope, started to come back down. So the bar can only go in one direction. And once it started returning to the chest, it wasn't going to pass. Yep, she used more of that narrow grip, powered off the chest, but just didn't quite have the tricep strength to lock it out. So we'll see if she can come back there next training cycle and come back and execute that next meet. Dana McNeil, 97.5 kilo. 
for her third and final bench. 215 pounds. And, and as we had mentioned for Dana, she's the deadlifter. She's not really a big bencher. You know, she went up five kilos from first to second, just go two and a half from second to third, make three benches and just move on. Just add, add a little bit to the total, move on to a deadlift. Locks it out. Presses it up to the ceiling. <laughs> Damn near. Gets a fist bump from legendary coach Mike T. And she goes three for three. Up next, 97 and a half kilo for a slam and Sammy to pass. Coming from Jamaica. Hoping to gain a little experience lifting amongst world-class judging, world-class lifters, world-class coaches. I mean, you look in the back, you got icons in coaching like Matt Gary, Joey Flex, Mike T. You have international level judges here. It raises your level of experience. <laughs> Nicely done. And the stream ain't too bad neither, huh? Stream ain't too bad either. That one but, you know, you have these elite athletes here. You got these elite coaches here. You got these high level referees here. Sammy came out here and hit another PR. PR on the second bench and the third bench. She's six for six going in the deadlifts. And her forecast is 12 to 495. Continue to build and show these other ladies from around the world. Hey, Jamaica's got some top level lifters as well. It'd be nice to see. Look, Jamaica in the Olympics, obviously, you see the type of level athletes they have. Could be some untapped talent in Jamaica that might be coming through in the next couple years. JC Cooper, 102.5 for her third and final bench. Five kilo jump, 226 pounds. There's gonna be a two and a half kilo PR right here for her. Oh, just a little too much. So close, it looked like she was gonna send it to another, another gear right there to get that sticking point, but just wasn't there. Sometimes you can find that other gear, sometimes you can't. Hundred and thirty kilo on the bar for Amanda Lawrence. I think that's a good call. One twenty seven and a half. Slowed, as you would expect, a seven and a half kilo jump too. No need to go too crazy. Yeah, as we mentioned, you know, she would, they, Joey would either do two and a half or five kilo jump, opts for the safer option once again, take a two and a half kilo jump. Not a PR for her, but that's what, that's what she's not trying to do today. And actually, she's now currently forecasted for the best lifter here for the championship. So that's another factor there, too. You know, conserve some energy, but get that best lifter here at Nationals as well. Like I said before, she's the reigning queen. So I think in terms of goals, if she can take best lifter without going all out, that's just fine with her. The world championships is definitely the, the bigger picture that she's eyeing. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows you win the world championships. Sheffield has already been announced. There's a schedule in play. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> Three white lights. <laughs> Amanda's like, yeah, whatever, I'll take it. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, good call there by Joey. And yeah. move on to Delft. Bonica Brown, 147 and a half, five kilo jump, 325 pounds. What is the bench press world record, kind sir, if you don't mind? The bench world record is at 153. And who is that held by? Is that Amelia? Amelia, uh, from France, Mergier? Bonica's I think she took that at the Europeans, if I'm not mistaken. And, and Bonica has done more 155, but you know that was not an international competition where she can set the world record. Oh wow! 
Listen, we're going to have at the World Championships, Mergier and Bonica are going to battle for the bench press record. They're going to battle for the total. And you know if you've been paying attention to the World Championships, people emerge out of nowhere. A quick peek at the standings after the bench press session. We got a bit of more red on that scorecard, Arian. Is that what you would have expected? It, it can happen in bench press when you have a lower max on bench press compared to squat and delve. A two and a half kilo jump is a bigger percentage jump, so it becomes more difficult to take those jumps, especially those third attempts. And we're going to be heading into the deadlifts. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take a 20 minute break. Let's see how we end up. You know Amanda Lawrence is going to want to take the best lifter. Will she do it? Find out in 20. See you then. back with the deadlift session for the 76, 84, and 84 plus women. It's a six pack lap of that, AKA King of the Lifts. And I got my King of the Lifts co-host with me, Arian Messi, come Messi. Thanks for stepping in, my friend. Yeah, no problem, it's been fun so far. Quick, easy session, and now the fun begins with the deadlifts. I talked to Amanda Lawrence back there. We thought maybe she might be shooting for that best lifter. And yeah, she said that's the number one goal for today is, well, I mean, number one goal obviously is qualify for Worlds. <laughs> You're gonna solidify qualify for Worlds, snag best lifter. Um, I talked to Aliza and she said, look it, bench didn't go the way I wanted, but I'm a deadlifter. So they're gonna be pushing for around the 400 pound mark. JC Cooper here, 84 plus. 130 kilo loaded on the bar for her, 286 pounds. And she's currently forecast at third. She's in a battle with Alexander Washington for the silver medal. We'll see what she can do here on the Dallas. Aliza Tesla, 160 kilo on the bar for her opener. 352 pounds. And, and Elisa's, you know, sitting in second place, not gonna be able to catch Dana, but, you know, silver medal at the national championship, her first nationals, she said this is her third meet ever. In addition, you may not get the invite to the world championship, but you can get the invite to the North American championships, which will be in Panama this year in mid-August. So I don't think she knows that this invite's coming her way. Oh, she's gonna find out. Look, at she's been powerlifting a year. A glimpse at the future, yeah, wow. 160 offered no resistance. So imagine that, you know, you know, your third meet ever, your first year in, you're at the national championship, <laughs> maybe your, your fourth meet ever, you're at the North American championship rep representing USA. You're looking across the warm-up room and there's Amanda Lawrence. There's Bonica Brown. You know, you're walking around the hotel, there's Taylor Atwood. And that's probably why she's having a blast. She's out here yeah. hanging out with those people, being coached by Chloe, another top level, international level lifter. Jackie Merzer. 84 kilo class, opening with 160 kilo as well, 352 pounds. Three white lights. This would be Jackie's competitor right here, Jasmine. They're battling it out there for second and third place. You know, they both missed their third squats. Jasmine missed her second and third bench. Jackie passed on her third bench. Now let's see who can make the deadlifts and get that silver medal. The battle continues. Jasmine 
Doobie, 84 kilo class, 165 kilos on the bar for her opener, 363 pounds. And 363 is loaded for Jasmine. And what we're hoping for here is a nice, fast deadlift that can set her up for the jumps coming forward to hold on to that silver medal since she's currently forecasted for second place. Yeah. That's what you want to see. Yeah. You solidify your total once you hit your opening deadlift. Once you solidify your total, the hay is in the barn. Now you can start taking mis risks. Alexandra Washington, 84 plus class, 165 kilos on the bar for her, 363 pounds. Yeah, another one that, you know, the Alexandra and JC aren't going to catch Bonica, but they're battling out themselves for second and third place. You know, 19 year old Alexandra here opened it with 165 kilos here in a battle. Let's see what she can do. Nicely done, smooth opener. And yeah, and JC took a 12 and a half kilo jump from her first to second delve, so we'll see what Alexandra can do to keep holding on to that uh, lead in second place. Semi to pass. Came up from Jamaica for this, opening at 207.5, 457 pounds. And out of our lifters here, you know, of course, we've talked about playing Dana, Amanda, Bonica. But Sammy DePass putting on a show, making attempts, hitting PRs. Yes, she's a guest lifter. She's from Jamaica, but she's doing really well here representing uh, Jamaica. And let's see how far above the 500 kilo toll she can get, how far she could be on that nomination list if they send her to Worlds. People will be in for a surprise when they see Jamaica there on the nominations for Classic Worlds. <laughs> well, we won't be, sir. Well done. Yeah, no, talking about the Jamaicans, I mean, yesterday we had the opportunity of seeing an 83 kilo lifter putting in a 325 kilos attempt for a deadlift, I believe. Um, they got some lifters, uh, they got some quality. In the next couple of years, they're going to start emerging. It, it was just last year you were commentating the deadlift battle where they're all going for the world records, and it was right around that 325. And then now this gentleman comes from Jamaica and pulls 325 here. Yep. World-class lifters are emerging all over. Speaking of, Dana McNeil Dana in the 76s, 215 kilos, 474 pounds for her opening dead. Yeah, her meat PR is 242.5, so this should be easy for her to solidify that national title and getting that automatic bid to Worlds. You got to think Jessica Bittner's watching this, taking notes. <laughs> Smooth and easy. Yeah, so that gives her a 502.5 kilo total, and the minimum was 497.5 four kilos, so that got her, her automatic invite right there to the World Championships. The minimum is the minimum requirement needed um, to get on Team USA. Every weight class has one. Yeah, so Powerful America, they didn't. What they did is look at the fifth place total at the last three World Championships and averaged that out, and that's the minimum they want these people to hit to get the automatic invite. But if you don't get the automatic invite, you go to the alternate list. You can still get invited through the secondary way. Monica Brown takes 220 kilo. 485 pounds. And as we had mentioned, Amanda with this opener will put her in first place for the best lifter here at the championship. Bonica with that opener puts her in fourth place. So she's up there as well, in the, already in the top four. Let's see if she can inch her way up in the best lifter battle as well. 235 kilos loaded, 518 pounds for reigning IPF 84 kilo. World champion Amanda Brown. Amanda Brown, Amanda Lawrence. Wouldn't that be a hell of a 
if you could add two lifters together. Amanda Lawrence probably gonna clinch the best lifter title here. Yeah, her meet PR is 260.5. A few weeks ago in the gym, she pulled 265, so 235 is gonna be no problem. Yeah, she has high hopes for her deadlift. Not for today, but if she needs it, it's a weapon she can wield at Worlds. And when you're talking about Amanda Lawrence, it's not just her weight class, but she's always got her eyes on the best lifter award. Dominance is what she's shooting for. Nicely done. No, no problem right there. And there you go, that gets her 114.8 points. Put her in first ahead of Heather, that was at 114.0. Moving into first place overall. And look at, this is a who's who in terms of world champions showing up. Several world champions on this roster on the women's side. And they are currently loading 142.5 kilos for JC Cooper in the 84 plus class. 314 pounds. And as I mentioned, she's taking that 12 kilo jump from 130 to 142.5. Continue to add that total, seeing if Alexander slips up on deadlifts, then Jay-Z can sneak into that silver medal position. But she's currently sitting in third. You gotta stay tight, you gotta stay close. And some, some of these athletes like the bigger jumps on deadlift. So since we saw like the seven and a half kilo jumps on squat, now we're seeing those 10 or 12 and a half kilo jumps on deadlift, percentage wise based on her max and also conserving a little bit of energy since it's the fast meet. That was fast and smooth right there. That was a fast second attempt. The added weight did not slow her down and then Jackie Merzer, 170 for her second attempt, 10 kilo jump. We're back into the 84 kilo class. Mm -hmm. And as we saw with JC on squat, she took a bigger jump from the second to thirds than she did on the first and seconds. So we may see a similar thing from here if she's trying to push for that placing. So we'll see what she puts in. But Jackie is herself is in a battle as well in the, in the 84 kilo class. Jackie decided to take a 10 kilo jump, 160 to 170. Her competitor, Jasmine, took a 12 and a half kilo jump. So we'll see, you know, Jasmine has already missed three attempts. Let's see if she can, you know, turn it around on deadlift and not lose this positioning here to Jackie. Well, looks like Jackie did her part. See if the judges agree. And they do three white lights for Jackie. Hundred and seventy five kilos, three hundred and eighty five pounds being loaded for Aliza Tesla. Yeah, Liz must be feeling good. She's taking a fifteen kilo jump. You know, she says the Delta training has been going well. You know, now she got the stress out, the butterflies out on the squat. She had a little bit of hiccup on the, the bench press with the press command, but Delta, you know, there's only one command. You go out there and you lift on your on your own time and everything like that, and she can go and execute. So fifteen kilos, she's feeling confident. Not confidence is not lacking with this young lady. You know, when you're a year deep in your lifting career, you could either be overwhelmed by the moment or you could just embrace the moment. And she is embracing the moment. 15 kilos added to her total. A nice smile at the top. High five from Chloe Dublin. Up next, Alexandra Washington. We're back in the 84 plus. 175 kilos will stay on the bar for her. And she opted for the 10 kilo jump, where as we mentioned before, JC took the 12 and a half kilo jump. So JC just inching a little bit closer, but Alex needs to go out there and execute the second attempt and not leave the door open.
Alexandra wants to slam that door shut. Looks like she might have done it. Got one more round of deadlifts to go, but she's certainly helping her cause. Three white lights. We're going to call out Jasmine Doobie. Jasmine is going to take 391 pounds on her second. Yeah, I, I think it was that 10 kilo jump padded up oh, enough that maybe JC won't take the shot. It's going to be too much out of reach. She may just focus instead on making a third deadlift and putting a solid total together. Jasmine Doobie, we're in the 84 kilo class, 177.5 loaded for her. Jasmine seems to be turning it around on that lift. Haven't had a failure yet. Sammy DePass, 217.5 kilos. 480 pounds for the Jamaican, making a name for herself. Yeah, 10 kilo jump, she must be feeling confident. 217.5 is a big number, and this is gonna put her total over 500, put her at 505 with the second attempt, and she still has one more to go. If you want to, you know, track progress, you better keep your eyes on Sammy. By the time the World Championships rolls around in the U.S., should they win the bid, Sammy might be a player. Whoa. A little bit of turbulence on the way up as she locks it out. That was effort. Three white lights. That was effort, Arian. Now we have to have the conversation. How many more kilos should you be adding onto that bar? It depends if she can maybe make, make a technical adjustment where she won't get that you know shaking issue she had. Sometimes if you start locking out your knees too early, then the hamstrings and quads kind of like you know going back and forth, and you get that shaking. So it depends whether she make a technical adjustment. If not, then maybe they just do a small you know five kilo, two and a half kilo, may even just shut it down for the day. If she's feeling tired, she's been around helping out other people or talking to other people, everything like that. Just end on a good note. Just pass on on the final attempt and move on. You got your 505 kilo total, which is great for the 76 kilo class. Well said, Dana McNeil, 230 kilos added for her second attempt, 507 pounds. For the U.S.'s 76 kilo representative, that was fast, smooth, maybe even better than her opener. I have to agree with you. Shaking off. You know, the, the flight and the travel and everything, starting to come into her own in the deadlifts. We told you she was a deadlift specialist. And now you're starting to see it. Bonica Brown, 230 kilos, stays on the bar for her. 507 pounds. Bonica taking a sizable 10 kilo jump. Now, yeah, now we're starting to see, see the show on, on the openers. Only Amanda was over 500 pounds. Now we have all three of these ladies over 500 pound deadlifts on their second attempts. This is a world-class field. Holy moly. That might have been better than her opener as well. Taking a bow, Bonica. She's a lot happier after a second than she was after a first. And I think she's also building. <laughs> I love the attitude and pizzazz she brings. And if you notice, she's not wearing a belt. She's gone back and forth trying out a belt and not a belt. Sometimes it can mess with your positioning and not give you as much of a benefit. So she's out here pulling 500 pound plus, beltless, making it look easy. Yeah, that's what queens do. Amanda Lawrence, speaking to queens, 245 kilos, being loaded on the bar for her second attempt. The Joey Flex disciple looking to take 540 pounds. This will put her 617.5 kilogram total, as we had mentioned, you know, throughout this weekend and on the King of List podcast. Is these lifters aren't going for the PR. So her PR is 646. She doesn't need that. So no. she's taking a casual 617.5 total today, you know, like a training day, and move on to Worlds. That's what you're supposed to do. I mean, Worlds is where, um, you know, the competition is going to come for you. Yeah! <laughs> Nicely done. Little, little bit of a sticking point at the top near the lockout, but... It was there. A little bit slow down, but yeah, she's she's got the 
the automatic bid for Worlds. She's got the best lifter in the bag. You know, she's going to be number one in the nominations for Worlds. Maybe she even passes on this third. Just save it. Don't risk anything. I was about to ask you what you expect them to do. I'm thinking either they pass on it or a very marginal jump. I would not be upset at all if they pass on it. Yeah, um, may maybe they want to put on 250 just to, you know, try another attempt, see how she's feeling. But, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised either if they just shut it down for the day. J.C. Cooper, 155 kilos, take 341 an, pounds. Take another 12 and a half kilo jump. We're back in the 84 plus weight class. And that was my co-host there, Leah, doing the handling from day one. Yeah, and it looks like they're playing it smart. You know, Alexander made that second attempt. That gives her a 420 total, so it's just a little bit too out, out of reach for JC. So they're just taking another 12 and a half kilo jump, get her to a 402.5 kilo total. So just focus on yourself. Hit the attempt that you want. Go for any PRs if it's there, and not overreach. Smooth pull. Judges agree. Three white lights. Yeah, good day there for JC. Eight for nine. Just missed that final bench, which would have been a PR for her. 180 kilo being loaded on the bar now for Jackie Merzer. 396 pounds, just shy of the 400. In similar scenario here in the 84s, Jasmine made her second deadlift, who put her at 420 total, so it's just a little bit too out of reach for Jackie. So Jackie's just taking another 10 kilo jump, going 180 here on her third deadlift. Adding 10 kilos, let's see. Is it right on the mark or just a tad ambitious? Slows a lockout, but it looks like she stuck it. And let's see what the referees say. Three by lights. Great, great job there, Jackie, ending on a good note, you know, missing the third squat, passing on the third bench because the second one was basically our all on act, but coming back in in three deadlifts. Well, here it is. Aliza Tesler had said in the back, she would love to finish off with a 400 pound deadlift. Chloe Dublin, her handler, was like, well, it's either gonna be 396, you, sh you prove to me you can handle it, we'll load up 400, here we are. How is her day gonna end? Whoa. She's fighting. Talk about a She's fight, fighting. and 400 it is. A nice little smile at the top, and the referee say, Three white lights. Again, way to turn it around. She had the low hiccup on the opening squat, cutting the depth. Had, you know, issues with the second and third bench. You know, not being motionless on the chest. Comes back as three deadlifts. Looks like that ties her PR, 182.5 kilos. Way to end on a good note. Mission completed at Alexandra Washington now. Also attempting 182.5 kilos, 402 pounds. Back into the 84 plus kilo class. Yeah, and, and JC already went, so Alexander's locked in for that silver medal. Now it's all for her. Her PR Delph is 170, so she already broke on her second. Now she's going for a little extra. Well, this is the place to do it. <laughs> JC just kicking around that weight there, showing some authority. Alexandra, but yeah, or you know, these lifters, sorry, can, these lifters have the 60 seconds to start the pull, so they can move the bar wherever they want on that platform, wherever they feel comfortable. And you got to do that with the baby powder hitting the ground there. You don't want to lose your, your footing at all. Whoa, just below the knees. A little too much. Yeah, good try there for Alexander. She missed the third bench and then the third deadlift, but like we said, gaining good experience now going into Junior Nationals in June. 
Jasmine Doobie now, 187.5 kilos, being loaded on the bar, 413 pounds. Jasmine taking a 10 kilo jump, looking to go three for three. Yep, she was, she's your silver medalist here in the 84 kilo class. So let's see, like these other ladies, if she can turn around, make three Dallas, and end on a good note. too much today. Yep, just a little bit too much for her, you know, missing the unfortunate third squat, second and third bench, and the third delve. So, you know, you gotta go back and assess, you know, what happened, was it the weight, was it the speed of the meet, and make some adjustments going forward. Sammy DePass, 227.5 kilos. Yeah, Ryan, we're down. A little over 500 pounds, I think I beat you to the punch there. So. We're down to four Dallas, all over 500 pounds now to finish off this session number three. See the Jamaican team behind her. And she already has that 505 kilogram toll. This would put her at 515. And she just has, you know, a little bit of that shaking on the second attempt. Let's see if she can maybe make an adjustment, stay a little bit tighter, patient off the ground, and be able to execute this 227.5. Oh, a little too much today. Staple to the floor and she'll wave to the crowd. But you know, great great test day here for one of the Jamaican lifters here, Sammy. He's like getting to see where her squat's at, where her bench is at, and then how much energy she energy she has left for the deadlift. So, you know, again, go as coaches, you go and assess and see, okay, maybe the deadlift isn't there on a day where you know it's a two hour session, two and a half hour session. Bonica Brown. Eighty four kilo plus. Former world champion multiple times, in and out of equipment, world games champion, the list goes on. 240 kilos loaded for her third and final pull. 529 pounds, 10 kilo jump. Yep, this would give her 647.5 kilogram total. She knocks uh, this one here. Everything's moving well, so I expect her to hit it, which should put her first in nomination at Worlds in the battle that you had said has come in her way. Now, Emily Mergier, I believe, had a very similar total at the French Nationals. Very close, very tight battle coming at Worlds. Oh my God. Nicely done. Gives a bow to the crowd to show her appreciation. Co compared to her third squat and bench, that was a little bit more difficult in the lockout, but still, third squat, third bench, look really easy, move very well. And then that one, you know, Bonica's doing a competition in a couple weeks to add on to the World Championship and the World Games and everything else she has going on. As if her schedule wasn't busy enough. 251 pounds. Yeah, you gotta wonder. I mean, that's a tight and busy schedule coming up for 2022. Emily Mergier does not have that kind of schedule. In terms of strength of schedule, she's gonna be the fresher lifter. And uh, obviously travel as well. France to South Africa, a lot easier, it's a lot smoother. Dana McNeil, 245 kilos on the bar, 540 pounds for her third and final lift of the day. Yeah, so they're taking another another big jump. Her best deadlift is 242.5, so this would actually be a PR deadlift and also move her total up to 532.5, make her competitive in that 76 kilo class that's coming her way in a couple months. For, for a reserve day for her to finish with this, if she gets it, it gives you an indication she's she's high up there. Oh, whoa, and that was pretty smooth too. 
especially for Dana, she can really grind out those deadlifts. And so that was pretty smooth right there. 532.5 kilo total before she goes to battle with the likes of Kimberly Wofford and Jessica Bittner. Yeah, absolutely, especially when you're a conventional puller, you can grind if you need to. If the fight comes, she'll be good for it. All right, Ryan, one more deadlift. One more to go, Amanda Lawrence. Surrounded by the flex squad there, 253 kilos being loaded. This is an American record attempt, 558 pounds. Looking so it looks like they, uh, they want to push it one more time, 253. Let's see if she's got one more in there, finish nine for nine, just like Bonica and Dana did. The perfect nine for nine, can she do it? She's pacing the bar, a whole nother level of seriousness now, folks. The crowd is on their feet. The fun and games are over. Oh, long live the queen, Amanda Lawrence, nails 253, an American record, your best lifter. Great way for her end right there, national record there on the deadlift and getting nine for nine, like we said. So they, they're pushing themselves a little bit, but not all the way. You know, they're saving themselves, they're making attempts, getting ready for two months from now when they have to compete at the world championship. Basks in the applause by the crowd. Amanda Lawrence, see you in South Africa, she says, taking a look at the standings there. All of these champions now obviously solidified themselves on the U.S. national team. Eyes on the IPF World Championships in South Africa. Arian, judging by what you've seen, how excited are you for the showdowns we're going to see at IPF Worlds? Yeah, definitely. They all came and executed. They did what they needed to do. It was one, win, and two, hit that minimum total. And then three is like save some energy for the ballots coming in two months. And so we're getting a taste of what that ballot is going to be. Bonica, you know, just doing more than what Mirage are done with more in the tank. And, you know, Dana's putting up 532.5 with more in the tank going for that battle with Kimberly and Jessica, as we said. So it's going to be interesting, you know, getting to that podium in some of these weight classes and saving some energy here is really gonna help for that. It's gonna be exciting stuff. Listen, hang around. We're gonna grab Amanda Lawrence, get a quick interview with her and get her thoughts on what happened today, getting best lifter, as well as what might lay ahead, world championships, Sheffield included. And then we have another session as well later on the 105s, the 120s, and the 120 pluses. You don't want to miss it. Jesus Olivares, the IPF king himself, returns to the platform. And a little caveat, a little side story, he'll be facing his brother Pablo. Haven't seen that before. Let's see what happens. Michael Davis in the 105s, obviously. Uh, an, a star emerging in the 105s, uber stacked at the global scene. And in the 120s, we're going to have ourselves a battle between Tristan Nasalrod and Enrique Lugo, we don't know who's gonna end up on Team USA. You don't wanna miss these battles. Make sure you come back. And in a few moments, we're gonna get Amanda Lawrence. I'm sure she's getting congratulations by her team. So stick around with us, please. here with now national champion add this to your accolades 
Congratulations, first off. Thank you. Um, what was the goals leading into this competition? We're just here to secure a spot for Worlds. I mean, easy work today, right? I mean, we're just warming up. Uh, I mean, and if that's your warm-up, you had the whole crowd on their feet. It's going to be exciting to see where you're going to bring the Worlds. Yeah. Was the best lifter always going to be the, the prize that you want to walk away with after solidifying yourself on the U.S. national team? Yeah, yeah. I mean, at Worlds here, we're, we're, sh we're going to try to go for that three-peat. <laughs> That's it. And never been done. I was just about to cue you. That has never been done. Yeah. It's history. You are literally rewriting the history books. Um, who do you think are some of the competitors you got to look out for at the World Championships that will threaten your goals for the three feet? I mean, of course, Leah. I mean, from France. She's she's really strong. She's gonna challenge me for sure. Um, but I'm gonna bring my best. So. Um, as always, so I mean, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> it's it's exciting because not only is it head-to-head -head matchups like that, but even overall. Team USA and Team France in the women's division, there's a bigger picture there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Those points you collect are going to go towards the national team points. Yep. Who's it going to be? What's your prediction? Who's going to win the national team for the world championships, USA or France? Of course, USA. I got to root <laughs> for us, right? <laughs> That's it. How can I not? That's it. And how excited were you? Obviously, just a couple days away removed from the announcement of Sheffield. Um, I know two years ago, you were on the roster to go there. The, the prize money, the, the venue, all of the hype packages. Now seeing this, coming into prep for the Powerlifting America Nationals and the announcement that Sheffield is back. Yeah, Sheffield is back. Incredible. There's a buzz going. Yep. Um, how much does that mean to you knowing that's on the table again? Oh, it's huge. There's huge opportunities coming, and I'm just super excited and honored to be a part of it. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the biggest <laughs> the biggest meet of ever in history. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a fun when everyone all on one platform all together battling it out. I mean, you, you just don't see anything like that, and there's a lot at stake. So um, I'm excited. I think it's going to push people to, you know, their to, to new heights, and it's going to be fun when to watch for the viewers. So It'll be a can't-miss event for sure. So will the IPF World Championships. Thank you for sitting in with me. Congratulations once again. Hey, thanks. Easy work. <laughs> yeah, and make sure you don't go anywhere. We'll be back with the men's 105s, 120s, and 120 pluses. Yeah, it's going to be good. <laughs>